thank you all. Thank you, Tom, for organizing this session. Hope you are enjoying My name is Ignacio, and I'm a PhD student in physics in the University of Barcelona. So I'm not, not an archaeologist, and I, I will do a comment in advance if I'm not precise enough in certain, in certain, certain, certain uh, terms. Um, and this work is with uh, Tom in the Ignacio project. Focused on the production and distribution of food mm -hmm. in, the, in the Roman Empire. And the origin of this uh, many methodological presentation that I'm, that I'm bringing here is this um, case study proposed, for, uh, proposed by a colleague. Um, and it's, it is born in the expected amount of, of uh, amphorae from, from wheat in Pompeii. In, in, in and this, um, there is a large quantity of Greek names in this, in this, uh, TPP, in this, uh, on this amphora. So, um, he proposed us to, to look for the origin of the names in this, in this database, <coughs> made in, in, in Oxford. This lexicon that uh, shows um, the names, uh, the place of origin, and a, a dating that can be more or less precise. So um, you can make uh, questions about the, the trade based on, on the opera the found in Pompeii, all this um, wine uh, from Crete uh, related uh, case study. But we thought that um, before doing that, we had to analyze the whole database to see if we can expect something from that. So um, this database is, is based, is formed by um, these names uh, linked to their birthplace, as I, as I told. So there are two <coughs> entities here, and let's uh, bring, bring here again these uh, two old networks, or bipartite networks. And this would be an onomastic geographic bipartite network. So we can uh, link uh, a name every time to a place, every time uh, an origin is mentioned in, in this database. So in the end, we end up uh, having a huge, uh, huge network, as I will we'll see, we'll see later. We have to deal with uh, several data issues. The first one is um, regarding these uh, different positions between uh, <coughs> different <coughs> positions when determining the, the location. There, are, um, there is this region um, <coughs> label, the settlement, and also the district in, in places like uh, in, in places like um, in Attica, where it's a um, rather complex uh, political organization, in the district uh, field we have like different uh, different decisions, as I said. So our decision was to discard the, the district and stick to the, to the settlement names and keep the, the region as a, as a node attribute that we, we will use later. So we would uh, end up having something like this. And there is also another, another thing that uh, was um, our concern. It's the different position in the different position in ratings and the, yeah, it's the, pos the possibility of uh, having several uh, repetitions in the, in, the, in the query results. So we, had, um, we decided to, to deal with a weighted network. And I'm going to explain um, quickly how, how do we link this, this uh, way, how do we weight these links. Um, we have a period of interest, and we have these uh, query results with um, certain dictation, <coughs> a certain dating. So the name I appearing in, in location J. <coughs> so the way for this particular link. We, we calculated as the overlap between these two time intervals, and it is penalized by the, the width of this, uh, the dating database. So if it's all contained in, in this period of interest T, it would be, it would be one. So we, we have our network. So now what, what, what can we do with this? And um, we take three periods um, as baseline. <coughs> they are defined, uh, as, uh, they are defined like this in, in this uh, Oxford database. 
we can see this uh, the, the size of the, of, the, um, of the networks. The smallest one is obviously the, the oldest one. And um, usually when, when dealing with bipartite networks, uh, it's uh, very common to, to do the projections and to analyze one projection in, in one mode or in, in the other. But here we find that <laughs> there is right, a very big amount of links when projecting on names and also a um, very big quantity of, of uh, links when projecting in places. So we decided to, to keep on going with the, with the bipartite, uh, weighted bipartite network. And our main goal is to define relationships uh, between places here and <coughs> identify, identify rows for this node and the, the labels I was mentioning, the, the region, the region labels. And uh, while uh, comparing this um, in these three periods, we, we aim to to uh, insight into this evolution of these properties. So I don't know if you are familiar with the community detection um, algorithms. This is basically the community structure is something that is um, present in many real real world uh, networks, and this is. Uh, it's characterized by a um, highly high density, high density of connections between groups. And these groups present sparser connections among other with other groups. So um, the way to evaluate this uh, this partition that, that we can make from the network. Um, usually, it's, it's uh, done by, by calculating the modularity, which is basically counting the number of modules of links within modules within these groups I, I have mentioned, and uh, subtracting the expected amount of links. And by expected, I mean um, this. Um, it is made by uh, constructing a new model that matches some of our real world, our real, real uh, for our target network characteristics. <laughs> and to, and then um, there's like this random expectancy of uh, having these this networks, this, uh, these links. Uh, just a quick remark on this uh, new model thing. We have uh, like, I think we have seen before that the uh, that a network can be represented as a um, and adjacency matrix, but in a bipartite uh, network, the adjacency matrix have, has some, some forbidden zones, if I may. This, um, this uh, rows cannot be linked to the to the, the first rows that are themselves, and the, the ones in the same mode you cannot link to, to the to the entities of the of your same nature. So you have to build a new model according to that. So. It's just to, to mention that is you have to take that into account and there are several algorithms that are that we are trying but at least but for now we are sticking to the, the traditional community detection methods. So in our case we have a group of places and names and the community would mean that these uh, these names are mainly concentrated in uh, in certain places rather than than all around. So if we have this silly crazy example here. <laughs> we have certain uh, settlements in this two in this two in, in, in this map, and we have these names. We can see that the of the links on these of these uh, names are more focused on, on this place than in this one, and the community actually give us something like this. So the first thing we have to um, find out is. Maybe it's something obvious, but not for me that I, 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 don't, know, I don't know much about uh, Greek geography and, and uh, masters. Is that the communities define very well, um, very well defined uh, geographical areas. You can see that communities, um, these uh, names are very, very focused on, on certain, uh, certain regions, and that this thing uh, 
it's it's uh, changing the long, long time <coughs> in this first period and the the, the the next ones. This, for example, is one of the biggest communities. It's uh, mainly concentrated in the in Peloponnese and the this this other one in the, in the surroundings of the Black Sea. And this one, for example, has it's ninety percent of the of the weight the community weight is only in, in one region, and we can find the examples of this um, all along the, the database. Here's the same for the for the next period. And then when uh, regarding the, the role of the, the nodes in the in the network, we have to, we are going to to use this uh, functional cryptography uh, proposed by Vimera uh, in 2005. We can display the nodes according to topological variables and see how they how they behave. It's an easy way to visualize quickly how the, um, what uh, what is this how these nodes participate in the network. One of the dimensions in the in the x-axis will be the participation coefficient. This is like a very classical measure of diversity. And it means that uh, when it's, it ranges from zero to one, and when it's zero, means that this node is only interacting with the nodes in its own community. And when it's close to one, it's um, interacting with many communities and in a very equally distributed way. So this most <laughs> more or less what I have to explain is it, it, when they are close to zero interactions within its own group <coughs> and the, the opposite of when it is close to one. These are regions that are, that are defined in this original, this original paper. And uh, well, <coughs> evolution cartography and varying these regions, it depends. It's not, they are not, not fixed uh, by, by no means. And then in the y-axis, we have a measure that tells us uh, if these nodes are considered hubs or not. They, they are important <coughs> in relation with, um, with this, uh, its own community. This is a standard measure that is um, set the uh, score. And we have this uh, divided uh, by this, this division in the vertical axis. So depending on where these nodes um, um, lay in this, in this cartography, we can uh, um, see um, <coughs> we can explain it sets its behavior in, in the network. So this is made for nodes. I will show you later uh, one of one of the examples. But we can do this for for uh, the regions as well. We we remember that. Um, our nodes or the places have a, have a label that is the region that they belong. And we can measure this participation coefficient of the regions. That means if a region constitutes only um, one community, or maybe it's, it's uh, distributed among several communities. And also, in the, in the y axis, if this region is important enough to constitute a, a hub. So we set uh, the point size proportional to the weight of the region. That means the times of these, um, the appearances in the, the database. And we can end up having something like this. This would mean uh, Attica, for example, it's the biggest region. And uh, it's mainly focused on, uh, on one community. It's, it constitutes uh, uh, its own community. It's, and, um, we can see what happens when uh, jumping from <coughs> one period to another. At the stage, uh, always the same. We, we can see how weak names uh, start to be start to be very very few in, in uh, the so-called classical uh, period. Then started to, to to be in weight, and in the imperial period, uh, weak names are strong enough to form a known community. And makes up from Italy um, like the, the region that is more important in, in its own community. This is another example from Montreux, and also with uh, Rhodes, then uh, this 
for this as is the main community, the main region in, in one community. Happens also in the second one, but in the third one, it's um, it's um, uh, dragged into another co bigger community where it's no, no longer a, no longer a hub. This can be can be explained by this um, this appearance and this um, function of the two of the more important settlements in Rhodes, Camillus and Lindo. We can see how there is always either one hub or <coughs> or not. You can see when one one of these um, of these settlements stop being a hub, this is the the line that uh, divides this half non half and leasing. <coughs> then it's the other one that comes up. And when they, when we have when the region starts to lose importance in its own community, in the periodic age, that is for this around here, both settlements stop being a big part of And linking to the to the first uh, one of the best slides with the Pompeii, we have made some preliminary exploration of this data set and we have found Two different, uh, two different names that behave very differently, and it's this one, uh, Soterius. It's uh, one name that is very, very important in its own community. It's only linked to to, to settlements in in the same in, a, in a same community. And this community is uh, mainly based on the the idea of, of creed. So this is uh, like uh, a cool result in thinking about that we are uh, studying um, the, we are studying yeah, the wine from Crete. So, but on the other hand, we have like a name Epaphroditus that I believe it's a very common name because it is everywhere in this scene period. And for now, we are now we are also working in a way to, to mitigate this effect of the possible homonymy cases. I believe there are common names in, that are everywhere. And we have to keep this, uh, this significant information and we have to this, uh, this, um, of this baseline of appearances. So as a conclusion and take home messages, as Tom said in the presentation, he said a lot of things that I, I, I could skip now. <laughs> this is um, like a networking, uh, especially a bipartite network, is a proper way to represent, to analyze, and to visualize this, uh, this data. The community education um, is a useful uh, technique to, to <coughs> reveal uh, like, a hidden structure of, of this, um, this link. This Merging from the interaction, you can find some meaningful, uh, meaningful division. Uh, the roles that we can use uh, to things like um, like functional cartography, looking at this uh, these nodes and seeing the differences between them in two dimensions. And uh, I'd like to say that this is a really methodological presentation. This is exploratory analysis of the database. And uh, in order to do a complete work, we need uh, like appropriate uh, research questions apart from this, the one from, from Pompeii. So if anyone wants to collaborate, we are open to collaborations. And uh, that's it. Thank you.